Welcome to evening worship here at Broadway Baptist Church. We're so glad you and your family are able to join with us here for church. We love Sunday night church. Beginning next month, we will be meeting in person. So we've been meeting online on Sunday night worship for, gosh, what, a year and a half or so now. And now we are uh, coming to a close of our online, on, uh, internet online services. And be soon be meeting in, per, in person with that. You know, I love Sunday night services because we get the opportunity to really dive deep into looking at God's Word. And it's an opportunity for us as believers to see what God did through this miraculous story of the parting of the Red Sea. Some background information. You can actually go ahead and turn there in your Bibles if you're there. We're going to be in the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 14, verses 15 through verses 31. We're going to be looking here at through the escape from the Israelites as they went through the Red Sea. And what's powerful about this passage is we're going to see that only the Lord could do this. This was not a natural phenomenon. This was not some special earthquake that just happened to occur at the exact moment in history. This was a movement of the Lord by him parting these waters of this sea so his people could cross through it and then get to the other side. And then the Lord also brought the waters back down and killed off all the Egyptians. And remember, the entire purpose of what's going on here is answering that question way back in Exodus 3 and 4 when Pharaoh said, well, who is the Lord? Who is the Lord and why should I listen to him? And God is spending all this time answering that question to say, Pharaoh, you asked the question, who is the Lord? I'm here to answer it. And that's what we're about to see. And the Egyptians will pay mightily for that answer with that. Verse 15, the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to break camp. What this means is they are now in a tough situation. Their backs are against the Red Sea, and they turn around and they look, and here come the Egyptians. The Egyptians are coming towards them because the Egyptians want to recapture them and bring them back to Egypt so they can do their slave labor. As for you, God says, Moses, lift up your staff, stretch out your hand over the sea, and divide it so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. God's plan is for Moses to take his staff, stretch it up, and divide the sea. And he's, God is going to use Moses to part the Red Sea. It's going to be dry ground, and the people will go right through it. And I think we're going we're gonna to see an example here of how the Lord is setting up a miracle. And he's saving his people. It's an example for us because salvation for us is also a miracle. The Lord saves. He is the one when we're in a situation, we've got water on one side, the fighting army on the other, and the only way is for the listen to the Lord, and we wait for the Lord. It goes on to say, As for me, I'm going to harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so they will go in after them, and I will receive glory by means of Pharaoh, all his army, and his chariots and horsemen. God's going to get the glory for this battle. And there's nothing the Israelites did. It was the Lord. He's the one who's going to win. Then the angel of God, who was going in front of the Israelite forces, moved and went behind them. So this, the angel of God is the pillar. So remember, we have this pillar, this big cloud pillar. That's During the day, it's a cloud. At night, it's a fireball. It's a pillar of fire. It's going to make a move. It's serving as a shield for the Israelites. It moves between both of them. It says the angel of God, it moves... And it's the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and stood behind him. It came between the Egyptian 
in the Israelite force, forces. There was a cloud and darkness. It lit up the night, and neither group came near the other all night long. It lit up the night because it was a fireball. The, the, the Egyptians were frightened and scared. They did not want to walk and go into this. That means, uh, I've heard of that word that used to be described as a tornado. It was a swirling whirlwind fire that's shielding God's people. It's a hedge of protection. In many ways in our life, we have that same hedge of protection. We as believers, we trust the Lord. He protects us. He shields us. He, he, he makes us into the people he's called us to be by preventing us and not allowing us to fall into sin and temptation. God's word says, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back with a powerful east wind all that night and turned the sea into dry land. So apparently a wind, an east wind came and started blowing the water of the Red Sea. Remember, the Egyptians are being shielded. And all of a sudden, all night long, all of a sudden, the water, it starts coming up. It's coming up and making a wall on each side. I mean, could you imagine seeing that? You're standing there looking, and there's a massive wall of water. Because you're going to walk down into the sea. And you look up, and there's fish. And these little sea creatures, and you can see them. And you're just walking along. God is pushing back. It goes on to say here, The Egyptians set out in pursuit. Well, I, mean, I missed the verse here. So the waters were divided, in verse 22, And the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with the waters like a wall to them on the right and to their left. What a, what a miracle. This is, this is a, a precursor to baptism. Baptism, in many ways it's also described in what went Noah, we're saved by water. Water, not so much our salvation comes from the water, but Noah's boat, the ark, I went and saw it a couple of weeks ago, Noah was saved in the boat, in the water. Here the Israelites are passing through the water because God has made a seawall on each side. And then they also the water comes back and kills all the Egyptians. During Noah's time, all the wicked people were killed by the water, the flood. And here, through us, water, it it's, it's, has a part of us that's experiencing death as we go under, and then life as we come up. We're saved by the washing of Jesus' blood. We're saved by the power of God, by Him parting the Red Sea, and then killing off the Egyptians so they are no longer are able to pursue. And they're free. It says here, The Egyptians witnessed this. And they set out in pursuit. They saw, hey, if they can pass through, we're going to pass through too. Because apparently the cloud now has lifted up. And they're witnessing what's happening. It says, they set out in pursuit. All of Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And he went into the sea after them. So they're going right in there after him. During the morning Watch, the Lord looked down at the Egyptian forces from the pillar of fire and cloud and threw the Egyptian forces into confusion. The morning watch, there was three watches at night. The first watch would have been from 6 p.m. to about 10 p.m. The second watch would be the middle of the night. It would be from about 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. The morning watch is the third and final watch. It's what brings in the morning. It would be from about 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. So the morning's starting to come. So during this middle of the night, 
2 a.m. to 6 a.m. The Lord looks down and he threw all the Egyptian forces. They, they become confused. This happened also with the Assyrians. They were ready to fight Judah. And they, God threw them into confusion and they started fighting each other. He caused their chariot wheels to swerve and made them drive with difficulty. Let's get away from Israel. So as they're going through the sea, they're realizing they're having massive problems. So they decide they're going to turn around and go back. This isn't working. We're confused. Um, Our chariots, the horses aren't working right. We're stuck. And it says, and they realize because the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. The Egyptians recognized that it was the Lord who was fighting this battle. It wasn't anything they did. It was God who was, who was causing this victory. Then the Lord said to Moses, so now all the Israelites, they made it through the, they made it through the Red Sea. And the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back on the Egyptians on their chariots and horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea returned to its normal depth. So right there at 6 a.m., all of a sudden, Moses, that all the people have made it over, he stretched out his hand, and the waters came back. That giant seawall, there's confusion going on for the Egyptians. And look what happens. They die. It returns to its normal depth. While the Egyptians were trying to escape from it, the Lord threw them into the sea. The water came back and covered the chariots and horsemen, plus the entire army of Pharaoh that had gone after them into the sea. Not even one of them survived. None of them made it. Not a single person who went into that sea in pursuit of the Israelites lived. God killed off the Egyptian army. Now, Pharaoh didn't die. He was, I guess, wise enough. He stayed on land, sent everybody else in after him. But the Israelites had walked through the sea on dry ground with the waters like a wall to them on the right and to their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the power of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Could you imagine all these dead bodies, dead animals? You wake up, the, the, um, the, the sun comes up, because this was a middle-of-the-night escape. You have to remember who else escaped to Egypt in the middle of the night? It was Jesus Sometimes you have to have a middle-of-the-night escape where you get out of town when nobody's watching. And this happened. God pushed back the seawall in the middle of the night. They passed through it. Moses stretched out his hand. The waters fell, and all the dead bodies are just washing up. The horses, the chariots, everything is just devastating news for them. And I think the principle we see here is a principle of this miracle that God used the parting of the Red Sea for 420 years. These folks had been in slavery. Pharaoh had such a hard heart. He did not listen to any of the plagues. And God even hardened his heart. And then we get to the point where God says, I'm going to make my name known. You're going to see how great I am. You're going to see the miracle I will perform. And they all died and perished in the Red Sea. The Red Sea for the Israelites was a place of life. The Red Sea for the Egyptians was a place of death. And for us, for us spiritually, have you trusted Christ as your Savior? That is a place of life. Or are we like the Egyptians where we say, like Pharaoh particularly, where we say, well, who is the Lord? I don't know him, and why should I listen to him? 
You know, what's, one of the great things about this story in this passage here is the Egyptians, when they realized their chariots were becoming thrown into confusion, when they realized they were starting to have problems, they said, hey, the Lord, he's fighting for them. The Lord's fighting for the Israelites, and he's against us Egyptians. We need to get back, but it was too late. God was going to use the sea waters fall, falling back into place to cause them to perish. It says here, last verse, When Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and believed in him and his servant, Moses. It took this. It took this tragedy for them to believe. Finally, their people are believing in the Lord. And I think the question for us this evening, what does it take spiritually in your life? What does God need to do to you to, in order for you to believe in Him. There's a lot of folks out there, maybe you know folks, they, for whatever reason, are not choosing to believe and trust and follow the Lord. And we don't always have to go through a Red Sea experience for Him to get our attention. But sometimes it does take some tragedy. It takes a miracle. It takes something, uh, an event in our life for God to get hold of us to say, do you have a fear of the Lord? Do you believe, do you trust, do you love Jesus Christ? And I ask you that this evening. Is Christ your Savior and Lord? Do you love Him? Is He the Lord of your life? One of the greatest things in the world is having the assurance when you pass away that you're moving from death, which we all experience death, to life. I think about the Egyptians. I would have been just like you, scared to death. I mean, not the Egyptians, the Israelites. The Egyptians are coming, the Red Sea's right here. Because God led us out in the wilderness towards the Red Sea. The whole purpose was to prepare for this mighty miracle. God puts us in a difficult predicament so he can get all the glory. We don't want to be glory stealers from the Lord. We want to make sure the Lord receives credit. We want to make sure that we also have the opportunity to pass through the Red Sea. Do you know the passing of the Red Sea also? Our salvation. Now, baptism doesn't save you. But remember, a week ago we had baptism. We passed through the waters. Baptism is a symbol of new life. Remember also, Jesus, he came through when he was baptized. He came through the Jordan River. The same river, the Jordan River, that Israel, when they entered the Promised Land, God also parted the Jordan River, and part of the Jordan River, and they walked through it. There's this passing through water, sim symbolizing, just like right here, with Moses in the Red Sea, of a change of your old life you're leaving behind. They're, they, they're gone from Egypt. Never again does Israel find themselves in slavery and in bondage to Egypt. Now, they made deals and Solomon married Egyptian wives, and there was mistakes that were made, but they never again found themselves in that slavery. You leave that old life, and you go to your new life in Christ. Jesus Christ wants to send you. He wants to pass you through the Red Sea. He wants to send this church through the Red Sea. He wants to send you whatever your addiction, your struggles are, allowing you to get to the other side, and you lift up your hands in praise. And the waters fall and collapse. And that old life, the Egyptian ways, all perish and die. And that's a symbol. It's showing that's not me anymore. I no longer have those struggles. I no longer battle that. That died in the Red Sea. What do you need to throw in the Red Sea? What do you need to leave buried behind? You're going into the promised land. You're going to be with the Lord. You're going to experience the power of God. Don't allow this desire, this hunger, trying to drag things from your old life into your new life. Jesus Christ has set you free. Do you want to get saved right now? Do you want to give your life to Christ? Listen, you can be born again. The Lord wants to see you saved. He wants to see you have a relationship with Him. And one of the great things 
about knowing the Lord is you can cry out and call out to him and he'll save you. We can do that right now. I want you to close your eyes, wherever you're at. You bow your head and you repeat this prayer. Dear Jesus, please save me. Lord, you saved the, Egypt, you saved the Israelites from Egypt. Lord, your son came to save me. Lord, I don't want to go back to Egypt anymore. God, deliver me from sin. From this day on, I'm yours. Standing on the shore, on new ground. In Jesus' name I pray. Say amen right there. Amen. God loves you. God wants to see you trust in him. The greatest message in the world is the message of Jesus bringing you through the Red Sea, bringing me through the Red Sea, and allowing the old way of life, the old way of Egypt, to perish and to die. I mean, you think about your old way. Bad attitudes, bad relationships, habitual sins, just problems that you should not be bringing into the promised land. You know, Israel at this point had so much ahead of them because they're now entering a new journey in their walk. They have now no longer have the Egyptians in pursuit. And their God's plan was for them is just to march up. They're just a few days away of just marching on up to the promised land and taking the land. But do you know that is not what happened? A seven-day journey from the Red Sea to the promised land. Just they're a week, ten days away. It turned into 40 years. Go, why? Why, Daniel? Why did it take so long? Because they got in the wilderness and they started sinning and complaining to the Lord. They forgot this miracle. Do you know, I think, if you would have witnessed two walls of water on each side, God allowed you to pass through the Red Sea. Why would you then get into this new land and then start griping and complaining? But that's what they did. Seven, ten-day journey becomes 40 years. And for us, if you're saved, you don't want to be longing and desiring to go back to your old way of life. God has delivered you from Egypt to your new life, and we live for him. Will you live for Jesus today? Have you trusted in him? If you have, why don't we now start living for him? God bless you. Reach out to me. Let me know how I can pray for you. I will see you here next week right here online worship. God bless.